In the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Would you please be seated? Norman Scribner and I worked together for almost a quarter of a century next door at St. Albans Parish. It was an amazing time, so amazing that we found it necessary to warn people who worshiped with us that when they died and went to heaven, the music would probably be a little disappointing. <laughs> During those years, as well as before and after, Norman was widely known, admired, honored for his amazing gifts. One could say that he enjoyed world renown, but those who were a little bit closer, I think would know that enjoy is not quite the right word. Honored by it, yes. Pleased with it, yes. Honored. Well, those well-deserved accolades swirled around a natural and unpolished humility. The kind that does not despise applause, but is continually surprised by it. On one occasion, I congratulated Norman on an honor bestowed, to which he replied in some amazement, but Frank, it's just sound. It's just sound. Now that comment says more about Norman's nature than it does about his appreciation of music because he certainly knew, and I know you know, and even I know that what he did was much more than just sound. But pause with me for a moment at that clearly rhetorical point, just sound. There is something loose in life that makes music more than just sound. And that something is what makes this service and what we're doing at this moment more than just remembrance and liturgy. There is a reality unleashed in life and in death that moves Godward, that moves Godward, making all things to be more than they were at their beginnings. The music that Norman made and made happen was infinitely more than just sound because of that force in life. You have heard it. You have heard it this morning. You have felt it. You have participated in it in a variety of ways. There is something, something of God, a force or a feeling pull or a push, a wind or a tide, but it moves. It moves Godward. What it does is that it raises sound to the level of music and raises music to the level of worship and raises worship to the level of praise which is where, in fact, we enter the joy of God. You know it. You felt it. I know it. We have felt it. We have been part of it. It is not something that leaves tracks that can be seen by science, nor does it lend itself to words, but it is as real as anything in life. It is the same quality and reality that touches human life and turns proximity between people into presence and turns presence into relationship and relationship into love. 
which is what it is to experience God. You know what I mean. You know it's there. It is what quickens hearts. It's what holds families together. We have all been touched by it. Some of us long to be touched by it more. But it's there. It is the same force that moves in life and turns noticing into awareness and then converts so slowly awareness into passion and then pulls at the privacy of passion and brings it out to the virtue of compassion. And it turns compassion into the work of God. In the Christian tradition, <coughs> that force is called the Holy Spirit, but its reality is not confined to a single understanding or wording. Norman Scribner knew that spirit in his art, he knew it in his family, he knew it in his work. And that force is continually at work in the world. You've known it, I've known it. We know it's real and no matter what it's called or even if it remains unnamed, it moves life Godward. Catching that spirit, leaning into it, feeling and trusting the forces in life that move us Godward. That's what musicians do. That's what lovers do. That's what true servants do. And that's what we're doing right now. We gather here in this place in order to reach for that which is beyond our control but well within our expectation. We reach for the spirit the same way that one holds a kite up to the wind or drops a stick into a stream. It's what you do when you let go of a child's hand at the schoolhouse door or share an idea with a friend. It is the universal act of letting go, the universal act of trusting the dynamics of God's plan to move life Godward. It is the way sound becomes music it is the way relationships become love. It is the way awareness becomes service. Catching that spirit is what conductors do when they raise a baton. It's what families do when they lower a body. That spiritual force is never absent, even when it is not apparent. It is the excellence that lurks in a first rehearsal. It is the love at the edge of every introduction. It is the passion that waits in every pause. It is the light that glimmers in the darkness of grief. What follows in this service are our prayers and of course, more music. They have the common purpose of opening us to the force of that which would move us and all of life Godward. It is the same spirit that enriched Norman's life and our lives through him. It is the same spirit to which we entrust him and upon which ultimately we all rely. Catching that spirit is what comes next. I hope that you will enter into it as fully as possible. Amen.
Amen.